Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Unity We Can Live Without, and our scripture is Psalm 133. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live in harmony. A couple of quotes on unity by preacher scholars have been cooking on my back burner for a while. The first is from the ministry of Dr. Adrian Rogers. Quote, it is better to be divided by truth than to be united in error. It's better to speak the truth that hurts and then heals than falsehood that comforts and then kills. It's better to be hated for telling the truth than to be loved for telling a lie. Walter Brueggemann follows the thought. Quote, Proper unity manifests itself in an ability to live together without conflict, oppression, and having common objectives in tune with God's purposes for the world. At the same time, scattering should not result in fragmentation or divided loyalty to God. For me, both quotes are poignant commentary on Paul, Ephesians chapter 4. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. All three of those thoughts are part of the same idea concerning the kind of unity with which we can survive and thrive and that which condemns us to revisit original sin. Of the three, Adrian Rogers puts it on the shelf low enough for even a small child. It is better to be divided by truth than to be united in error. You hear a lot about unity these days, especially out of Washington, D.C. Although it is never articulated, and how could politicians ever be clear, is that what they mean by political unity is for all of us to think like they do, so we can set things up like we all want. An irascible fly in that formula for the petulance of keeping the powerful in power is that unity to a politician means do it my way, even if it means ignoring any truth that contradicts what I want. A disclaimer, I am about to use political realities to illustrate what I've just said about Rogers, Brueggemann, and Paul, but these are not political plugs. More so, these will show us what living under political banners causes, the kind of unities two cats have when their tails are tied together. The previous administration was entirely about power and economy. Led by a businessman turned politician, putting America first was the Holy Land. The current administration lauds equality and justice. Led by a career politician, the new nirvana is holding hands at whatever cost. Republican Party values center on the economic status quo and keeping the rules. The Democratic Party values almost no rules and a federal open-door policy to the Treasury. Both parties want everyone in the land to bow to their way of doing things. In real time, what they're proposing is not unity, but uniformity falling in lockstep behind the current leader, even if it means walking off the cliff of truth. In short, Republicans need to read God's take on materialism. You know, that irritating little thing about rich people ignoring the poor and finding the gateway to heaven a little cramped. In short, Democrats could do well to remember that equal and just extend to all of life, even those living in the womb. For you today, a truly quote-unquote woke America isn't just about ending oppression of one race, gender issues, or political strategies. A truly woke America would be one that has learned again to be humble before he who is truly God. Hint, he won't be found when they call the roll on Capitol Hill or Pennsylvania Avenue. 
You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.